Hi everyone, so I think uh, we can start by just introducing ourselves. So I'm Jay, I'm a junior doctor in London. Uh, I'm Nimesh, I'm also a junior doctor in Bangladesh. Uh, <coughs> Hi, I'm Peter and I'm a political economy student from King's. Uh, uh, hi, I'm Maxa, PhD student uh, at Data Science. Hi, I'm Arjo, I'm studying computer science and management at King's. I'm Eamon, I'm a junior doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're here to talk to you today about what we've been working on over the last 24 hours, which is GateMed. Next slide. So, um, in terms of our problem statement, um, this is something we see in our work um, quite a lot, even in the acute setting. Um, we see the impact of this, but chronic disease in the NHS is diagnosed too late. And late diagnosis um, costs NHS billions every year, but it also costs patients their health. And often, um, late presentations don't uh, lead to a lot of harm for patients. So, um, as you can see here, the NHS spends vast, vast amounts of money on um, the common big chronic diseases. Um, these are selected diseases that we have particularly focused on, which I'll talk more about in a minute, but um, just to illustrate the extent of that, for example, so diabetes, the NHS um, in 2019 spent about £1.5 million pounds an hour, um, which is a huge, huge amount of money. It's the dodgy projector. Okay. Um, so we thought about this and we thought, what if we could use the technology that's already in patients' pockets and our pockets as well to detect the onset of disease early and also to look at deterioration um, of existing disease as well. Next slide. So one thing that we found was that there's a wealth of data and a wealth of studies um, investigating gait and how this can um, potentially help diagnose um, lo lots of different conditions and indicate that patients are um, going to develop particular diseases later on. And um, just a few examples of these are Parkinson's disease, which um, certain studies have um, shown that four years out from diagnosis, this can be, um, this can be highlighted in certain patients' falls. Um, there's a lot of patients that are at risk of falls and measuring accelerometry um, and analyzing gait that way can um, show patients that are at risk of falls. Diabetes, development of peripheral neuropathy, which, be, uh, which can be identified early and treated early uh, to prevent further complications and saving money. Uh, next slide. Additionally, there's been studies that show that there's um, gait changes in Alzheimer's disease as well, which can again lead to early early detection and prevent uh, early detection and um, possibly further treatment once things um, start developing. Then, uh, as we said, neuropathies, and also um, interestingly, we found studies showing that um, COPD patients have also shown gait changes that can be de detected by um, accelerometry. So we know that there are early changes in a lot of conditions that can be picked up um, using smartphone and smartwatch accelerometry data. Um, so in terms of what we did over the last 24 hours, <laughs> okay, so in terms of what we've done over the last 24 hours, we've developed a functional early stage paired smartphone web app and machine learning model that can actually successfully record a patient's gait and um, classify it as normal or abnormal. Now obviously there are a lot of caveats to this, um, but we have created a, a sort of working product in that respect. And next slide. The video is not playing. It's all right, just uh, yeah. go back. Um, so in terms of how our model has done, so. It, Ultimately, we wanted to be able to look at a number of different chronic diseases, but across this weekend, we've only been able to get it to classify normal gait and simulated abnormal gait. So we've recorded a bunch of examples of each. Um, we've trained it on these examples, and we've achieved pretty good accuracy, so about 81.4% accuracy in separating out normal and abnormal gait. And that's a mixture of subtly abnormal gait and grossly abnormal gait, which we've simulated uh, or attempted to simulate. <laughs> um, we've also achieved um, really good sensitivity and specificity levels, and we'll talk about the relevance of that in a moment. So, I mean, ideally we have a video to kind of show you the app that we've designed, but 
technology seems to think otherwise. But we'll talk through exactly how it works. So the patient will either themselves find the app or be instructed to by their GP to download our app, GateMed. There's very clear instructions on the screen. It will tell you, start the, start the recording, put the phone in your pocket. You then have 20 seconds to walk and there's a timer, but the, the phone should be in your pocket, so you're not looking at that. Automatically, the recording will stop at 20 seconds and effectively generate, generate a CSV file, which then gets uploaded to our machine learning model. So we have an example of our app there. In terms of how the, at this stage, what we currently have is we then need to upload this into a web-based model, but in the future, this will be an automatic process that goes straight from the app on the phone to the web and gets effectively analyzed there. From this point, the app will tell you, is your gait normal? Is it abnormal? And from then onwards, it will request or recommend whether you need to go get any further healthcare recommendation. This is kind of the data that you'll see from the, on the web in terms of whether you get abnormal gait detected, normal gait detected. And we've tested this out and it's been fairly accurate so far. On the left, that's literally the raw data of accelerometry where you are moving in the X, Y, and Z planes. In terms of potential challenges, there are a number. And ultimately, you have to ask, how much does everybody want to know? That will vary depending on the person. And to present an app that tells them what the overall population wants to know can be challenging. There is always the risk of misclassification. And we've kind of got our sensitivity and specificity levels there to kind of help with that. How do we explain detected gait abnormalities? We can kind of say, at this moment in time, you're normal, you're abnormal, but then we can't really go any further into specific gates. And just in terms of where we want to take this, the more data we have, the more tests we have, the better our deep learning model is, the more power we have. We also would like to kind of eventually, with more data, differentiate between different pathological gates as well. So, for example, Parkinsonian gate compared to an Antalgia gate compared to a broad based ataxic gate. We would like to include other predictors of disease into the model too. So, audio is very helpful. Parkinson's, there are studies that have shown that, but also even smartwatch data as well. And there are studies that have shown that arm swing, etc., are all predictive of. Parkinsonian disease before actually a patient gets diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. So we can really speed up diagnosis at an earlier stage for these patients. So that's kind of a quick summary of what we've got so far. And if you'd like any more questions, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So judges, do you have any questions to start with? They're, they're engrossed in their demo. Can I ask just if there is, I take it there are no already existing labelled open databases of GATE that you can use? No, so th there are um, labelled databases of GATE that have been obtained using sort of specialist equipment. But our proof of concept, what we, we really wanted to show is that in line with these studies that we've looked at, um, this is data that can be collected from your smartphone uh, that's in your pocket now or smartwatch. Um, very, very easily, and we couldn't find any raw data online that showed that. Good, thank you. Thank you, fascinating. Now, um, a group of <coughs> patients who will really benefit from this are the elderly because they will have the chronic uh, illness, etc. How are you going to make it so user friendly for them? Because most of them won't be tech savvy and you know, will be even worse than me. So, how are you going to overcome that? Sure, um, that's a really good question. So obviously with any digital health intervention, there is an element of, is this going to be divisive? Is this going to exclude particular groups who are not as confident um, using mobile technology in this case? Um, what we've done to try and mitigate that is, number one, make the app as easy to use as possible. Um, we don't want to overcomplicate things. We, we don't want to bombard people with information. Um, ultimately, we feel that a solution like this, as simple as this, based on technology that now the vast majority of the population have, um, is only going to grow in utility because as more and more people start to use smartphones and smart technology, um, and there's no reason in my mind why 
someone who's elderly and doesn't use a smartphone couldn't have a smartwatch or other um, sort, sort of low maintenance device that could record this data. Um, but yeah, as, as the prevalence of these devices increases, um, we hope the util utility of something like this will also increase. And, and just to feed into the simplicity that we're aiming for, rather than, again, uploading the file that you receive from the app, this will be automatically done. Um, so there's an extra step that will be um, taken out with future development, and um, it will just provide an instant result um, for the patient. Thank you. Matt? Thanks. Um, I've got a couple of questions, actually, but I, I just wanted to follow up on the um, on Murray's last uh, question about the use of the How, um, firstly, how how important is the use of smartphone slash smartwatch technology in what you're trying to achieve here? For instance, um, is that the key bit, or is the is being able to capture someone's gait and some data about their gait the key bit? And therefore, could there be other ways that you could capture that from people who don't want to carry carry around smartwatches or smartphones? So that's my, that's the first part of my question. What do you what are you thinking of? I'm not. It's not. I'm not coming up with the ideas. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess, I guess my video. Let me. No, I actually you know what. I'm, I, I don't. I haven't even thought that much through it. I, it's more just uh, we're asking about elderly people using smartphones, smartwatches, and it's a bit of a generalisation because lots of elderly people have smart yeah. smartphones. But so let's, let's just say there's. And a group their families of have smartphones, and their yeah, carers sure, have smartphones. Sure. Yeah. There's, a, there's a group of people who um, maybe will not be carrying these things around with them. Yeah. So my question is, what you're proposing here around gait analysis, is, is this just the method by which you're collecting this data, uh, or is it, uh, is, this, is it fundamentally important in what you're proposing, or you know, might there be other ways of, of collecting the data that still allows you to uh, do AI-enabled um, sort of analysis of gait? 20 second answer, please. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, as you might be able to tell from our slides, we've approached this more from a public health perspective and yeah. saying, well, the vast majority of people have smartphones. Here's a great way to lower chronic disease burden, potentially over many years in the NHS. But you're absolutely right, some people don't have smartphones and won't want to or be able to carry them. Again, this is a very small part of the technology within a smartphone. I'm sure um, an accelerometer on Amazon wouldn't cost very much. It would be easy to implement that within another bespoke device that could record that data and then potentially transmit it to a, a GP or, or someone else who, who can um, use that. So I'd, I don't think that's necessarily a limiting factor. It's you know accelerometer technology that's currently implemented within wearables and within smartphones that we um, are using as our proof of concept. Okay, <laughs> I've just seen that Stanford are looking at identifying gait from video, so there are other options. Um, I, have a, I have a limited understanding of the whole sensitivity specificity thing, but I think I'm right in thinking specificity 100% means that you're not mis misidentifying abnormal yes. gait, is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Um, is there, have you thought about the risk of um, identifying people with abnormal gait where the abnormal gait is not necessarily about some kind of early onset of a <coughs> chronic um, condition and, and might that have a negative impact on the general public health approach? Uh, yes, absolutely. So um, in terms of how we train and test these machine learning models, there's always going to be some risk of misclassification. There's always going to be a question of what we do when someone is misclassified. Um, there will be people with abnormal but um, non-pathological gates um, who, who would be using something like this. Um, really it's a question of more data. How many var normal variants can we include in our training set and how will that, uh, and essentially that will impact on how um, robust our model is to not accidentally predicting that there, there is some kind of disease process going on. So it's, it's really a question of data about in numbers um, from my perspective. Last question. Yeah. 
and thank you for your presentation. I suppose one of the things we've referenced the elderly, but I guess from a public health perspective, one of the key initiatives is prevention. So one would argue that should be much, much earlier, um, as opposed to then getting to the point where people are elderly and then considering. But I, as a runner, I would question my running gait is completely different to my walking gait. So the results would be almost very different. Is that something that you've considered or would be considering in the future? In terms of... Uh, in terms of the risk to my, from a chronic condition perspective, it would, the gait and other would potentially be different? I guess this is a, a gait of walking. It's an analysis of walking, not a running. Yeah, I'm just thinking, yeah. So we, we only analyze, I'm not sure if you saw it in the app, but we only analyze 20 second recording of your walking. Uh, and we, I mean, yeah, this is part of the process of developing a very clear set of instructions within the app to explain how to record yourself. But essentially it is just a straight walk for 20 seconds rather than running. That answers your question. Which maybe something different if you look at running analysis. Yeah, that's something yeah. for us, whatever, but that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I think and also the power walking versus, mm. like, is there any difference? Just for future mm. thought, that's it. Yeah, so if we do consider different types of gates, like for walking and running, then that might also create a, um, like difficulties with the model. So the machine learning model might start misunderstanding the differences, but if we collect a lot of data just for walking, for example, might be a lot more accurate because then there isn't such big differences in the running gate as opposed to walking gate. Yeah. 